Hi dear cricket fans, subscribers and friends of Cricket Happenings. Uh, this is your host Ram with an edition of Cricket Happenings today. Uh, that the 1st February 2011. Well, what a match we had here uh, at McLean Park in Napier where the 4th One Day International was being played between Pakistan and New Zealand. And Pakistan have actually taken a lead in the series by, by going 2-1 right now in this 6th uh, match One Day International series by actually winning the match by two wickets with one over to spare uh, and it was a thrilling match because the last three overs 24 runs were required Miss Baul Haq remained 93 not out and Sahil Tanvir uh, struck three fours in the penultimate over uh, to get the victory for Pakistan uh, I'll talk about that later on and also uh, we will be looking at the preview of the uh, fifth one day international of the Australia England series where, as you know, Australia have already taken an unbeatable lead of 4-1 in the series. In fact, it will be the sixth one-day international uh, of the one-day series here. Uh, and this is going to be played here uh, at uh, Sydney, that is the SGG, SCG. Well, so let's look at the match between Pakistan and New Zealand. What an exciting match. Everybody had their value for money yesterday. As far as New Zealand were concerned, uh, New Zealand were the ones who actually won the toss and also Daniel Vettori uh, said at the start of the match uh, that it was looking a good batting wicket and well it was but I thought the New Zealand batsmen couldn't take much advantage of the uh, conditions that were prevailing there because the top order absolutely failed but the lower order um, did very well. In fact Franklin came to the party with 62 of 75 balls with 7 fours. Brendan McCullum uh, made 37 of 39 balls with 3 fours and Nathan McCullum his brother got his maiden one day uh, half century as he made not out 53 or 58 balls with 5 fours and 1 six and that was what took the uh, New Zealand score on to 262 for 7 in the 50 overs it was uh, it was a very very defendable target but uh, Pakistan really played well to get over the 262 just talking about the games uh, that was played yesterday that is the uh, uh, the fifth the fourth one day international there at McLean Park in Napier uh, New Zealand uh, won the toss elected to bat uh, and the bowling was very good at the time. Sohail Tanvir, in fact, Martin Guptiller and Howe were going. Uh, Jamie Howe was the one who opened the innings. Jamie Howe, uh, every time I see of him, he looks very, very impressive. He presents a very straight back. One of the on drives and the straight drives that he played was absolutely superb. Martin Guptiller uh, continued to impress with his uh, pull shot, uh, just uh, the way he used to pull, uh, pull for sixes and boundaries. And both of them actually. Uh, uh, took their time at the crease and got uh, 40 runs in 7 overs and the first wicket was gone when uh, Martin Guptill was first to go, Yunus Khan was fielding very well today uh, and the Pakistani ground fielding unfortunately in the morning was not up to the mark and the first wicket to go today was Wahab Riyaz giving them the breakthrough as Martin Guptill uh, was trying to pull a ball pulled it into the Yunus Khan's hands and he was gone for 21 of 17 ball, 3 fours and 1 six. Uh, after that Jamie Howe perished as uh, Abdul Razak, who was bowling very in a very miserly fashion, if you see his bowling figures, seven over three made and sixteen runs and one wicket. Uh, so he took the wicket of Jamie Howes. He was caught by Umar Akmal uh, of the bowling of Abdul Razak for 13 of 29 balls with two fours. Ross Taylor failed as uh, Yunis Khan took him in the slips of the bowling of Abriyas for four. Uh, Styris also got run out for 11 of 28 balls with two fours. Kane Williamson holed out to long on of, of uh, the bowling of Mohamed Afiz as Yunis Khan took the catch for 15 of 36 balls with 1-4 and uh, New Zealand were in all sorts of trouble when Kane Williams had departed 79 for 5 after that uh, it was Brendan McCullum and uh, James Franklin at the crease uh, both of them, uh, James Franklin playing started playing some very good offside strokes Brendan McCullum uh, was stroking the ball too but both of them slowly and steadily took the score on to 141 in the 33rd over and when Brendan McCullum actually perished caught behind with the bowling of Wahab Riyas for 37 of 39 balls with 3 fours and what a delivery from Wahab Riyas just that amount of reverse swing the ball just left Brendan McCullum he edged it to Kamran Ekman and he was gone 37 of 39 balls with 3 fours and 141 for 6 uh, the batting power play was on uh, Nathan McCullum and James Franklin uh, took a bit of advantage out of it. Nathan McClellan in particular playing some very good parallel shots and also beautiful six over uh, cover but then James Franklin was a victim of Shahid Afridi for 62 of 75 balls with 7 fours. That was a good partnership which actually took them to 205 and finally Nathan McClellan remained not out on 53 of 58 balls, 5 fours and 1 six. Daniel Vittor was not out on 13 of 15 balls with 1 four and the New Zealand innings as I said the top order totally crumbled but the late order really really 
played well. If you see Franklin made 62, Brendan McCullum made 37, Nathan McCullum, his brother got his maiden half century in one day internationals. He was not around 53. 262 for 7 of 50 overs, New Zealand finished with, with bowling figures. Sohail Tanvi and all over the place, 9 overs, no maiden, none for 67. Abdul Razak was superb, 7 overs, 3 maidens. 1 for 16. Bahar Briyas also moved the ball very well. 10 overs, 1 made in 3 for 51. Umar Gil, 7 overs, went for 49. Was not up to the mark today. Yesterday, Mohamed Afiz, 7 overs, 1 for 25. Shahid Fridi bowled 10 overs, no made in 1 for 42. And it was very good to see Shahid Afiz just strangling James Franklin down the onside and then picking up with the ball, uh, which got frustrated Franklin out for, uh, for uh, 62 very well made runs. Now, looking at the Pakistani reply here. Now, the Pakistani reply. Uh, Mohamed Afiz was the first to go as Hamish Bennett bowling a lot of pace actually had him uh, caught and what a Taylor, Taylor took a stunning catch in the uh, first slip, just stretched his hand and above his head took the catch and the ball was really travelling at the time and Mohamed Afiz was gone for 12 of 33 balls to two fours. Uh, Hamid Shazad was joined in by Kamar Akmal and Kamar Akmal and Hamid Shazad played some good strokes and took the score on to 71 before Kamar Akmal perished to Scott Stiris actually coming in uh, and striking twice there. First actually had Kamar Akmal uh, caught by Taylor. Taylor was always into the match today. Uh, he was the first three catches were taken by Taylor as Kamran Akmal was gone. Caught Taylor bowled status for 20 of 30 balls with two fours. And Ahmed Shahzad, after playing a very good innings of 42 of as many balls with six fours and one six went as he was caught by Taylor of the bowling of status for 42. And then Yunis Khan. And after that, there were 84 for three Pakistan at that stage and they need someone to actually win. Then that 89 run partnership followed uh, between these two stalwarts, Yunis Khan and Ms. Baul Haq. Yunis Khan and both of them bided at that time, but Yunis Ms. Bahul was playing the strokes um, as and when uh, presented with an opportunity. And finally, the 89 run partnership came to an end, And but they had made 173 in 38th over. So one can imagine there were a lot of wickets in hand. This is what Yunis Khan and Ms. Bahul Hook can do. And then Yunis Khan was uh, run out for 42 as he slipped while running, and he was uh, run out for 42 of 63 balls with 1 4. And then uh, Ms. Bahul Hook was there in the middle with Umar Akmal and Shahid Afridi. And the batting power play was there, so definitely uh, the batting power play was taken. But in the batting power play, uh, it didn't turn to Pakistan's advantage as uh, Daniel Vettori came in and dismissed uh, both the hitters. Umar Akmal was uh, caught by Nathan McClellan on the bowling of Vettori for 10 of 17 balls with 1-4. And Shahid Afridi was trapped in front by uh, Vettori for 4 of 2 balls with 1-4. And suddenly the Pakistan innings once again uh, were crumbling. 198 for 6 and New Zealand th thought they had a, a chance there. Abdul Razak was also dismissed from uh, 198. They took the score on with uh, Ms. Baulag uh, playing some good strokes there. And Abdul Razak also was there, so the hope was there. But Abdul Razak, after contributing 23 of 18 balls with 1-4 and 1-6, also f f perished there as Bennett took his ca Bennett uh, was the baller and Vettori was the catcher and he was gone. And then uh, Wahab Riyaz. Uh, um, and then uh, finally it was three overs and uh, 24 runs uh, to get for Pakistan and that was the time it was real pressure. It was Ms. Baul Haq and um, it was um, um, Ms. Baul Haq actually uh, when, when there were 24 runs required of three overs, uh, Scott Styris was smashed over long on for a six and also uh, a very good boundary from Ms. Baul Haq suddenly put the pressure on. Uh, ten runs were taken but Wahab Riyaz probably had to give the strike to Ms. Baul Haq. Uh, went in for a big shot and he was gone, caught by Brendan McClellan of Styris for a duck. And again, the Pakistan innings um, once again uh, uh, like looked a bit dicey there, 250 for 8 with uh, Ms. Baulak left in the company of Sohail Tanvir. But Sohail Tanvir was the one who really hurled his nerve. As in the penultimate over, Sohail Tanvir uh, uh, hit Team Saudi for three boundaries to remain not out on 14 of 6 balls with 3 fours, and uh, Ms. Baulak was not out on 93 of 91 balls with 7 fours and 1 six and that was the victory for Pakistan as, as both of them and Sohail Tanvir also held his nerve I would say and finally the Pakistan were the victors there with one over to spare they made 264 for 8 of 49 overs winning the match by two wickets and Ms. Baul Haq uh, for his um, a knock of 93 not out of 91 balls with 7 fours and 1 six was rightly named man of the match and well, he definitely deserved to be in Miss Baul Haq, according to me, is in some great form here. Um, whether in the whole New Zealand tour, I've seen him, even he is the captain, he has been unruffled and he has been doing a great job. Uh, my vote would be for Miss Baul Haq for the, uh, for the captain of the Pakistani team for the World Cup 2011. This is my take on the issue, dear fans. 
and then I don't know whether you will all agree with me. Uh, the balling figures 10 overs no made and none for 70 for Saudi was very costly. Hamish Bennett 10 overs no made and 248 bowled well. Nathan McClum 4 overs no made for 26. Daniel Vittori 10 overs no made and 248. And Stardis 9 overs no made and 3 for 40. And James Franklin bowled 6 overs for 29. So Pakistan are leading the 6 match series here 2 1. So that is as far as uh, this match is concerned, Pakistan taking a lead there. And a very, very quick preview of the sixth one-day international between Australia and England at Sydney. Well, the only thing that I would like to talk about here is Australia uh, have to get a good start. There. I mean, Australia have everything to play for. They can do some lot of experimentation here. Uh, and uh, But still, they need to keep it going. But it is uh, good auguring for it is well. It is auguring well for them because they are going for the fourth consecutive World Cup 2011 title, as you know, and they are doing well. So this is going to be some bring a lot of confidence back into the Australian setup here. Shane Watson, there's no Ricky Ponting in the team, but they're still doing well. Shane Watson, Brad Hand, top of the order. Tim Payne might get a look in today. Michael Clark is the one is a question mark. He has to really, really hit form um, uh, now before the World Cup. And then uh, Cameron White uh, has to go for a big one. And other than that, I don't have much to share. Brett Lee has been doing his great job. Sean Tite might be back uh, after being dropped in the previous One Day International uh, to get a, a real uh, um, pinch at the English batsman. And uh, then we have uh, Mitchell Johnson, Xavier Doherty. As far as England are concerned, well, the batting has been a bit of a problem for them. Uh, Matt Pryor, uh, the other day he played with Andrew Strauss, has to get into some good form here. Jonathan Trott has been one who has been keeping up the one, but the other players, the later order players, like the middle order players, like Kevin Peterson, Ian Bell and Ian Morgan has been uh, not uh, having a good time in the One Day International. Paul Collingwood has been a constant failure with the bat. Uh, James Treadwell, uh, and then we have Chris Wokes, uh, who did well excellently, 6 for 45 in the last game. Other than James Anderson's comeback has been good, and Stephen Finn has been looking very impressive. But uh, well, all in all, as, as I said, Australia have everything to play for. They are leading the series, unbeatable lead. And England are the ones who have to do everything to get out of this and actually salvage something uh, because that would give them a lot of confidence going into World Cup 2011. That's it, dear cricket fans, uh, friends and subscribers for Cricket Happenings. I will see you all tomorrow. That, that's it. This is Ram signing off. Thank you.